Good day, everyone. Welcome back to our show. I pray that God will give us wisdom once again to have a productive learning experience here at Vet Talks with Doc Athena. Good morning. Our lesson for today is abortion in goats. Again, this is a guide for animal raisers, students of veterinary medicine, and animal science. And basically anyone who is interested. So let's start by defining what is abortion. So according to the Great Soviet Encyclopedia, abortion is the interruption of pregnancy with either the subsequent complete or partial resorption of the fetus or the expulsion of the dead fetus or the immature fetus from the uterus. So what are the causes of abortion in goats? There are two causes of abortion in goats. First is the non-infectious and the infectious. Non-infectious would be plant toxins, dietary deficiencies, drugs, fetal malformation, and stress. As for the infectious, there are three possible causes which could be viral, bacterial, or protozoal. So, let's see what are the non-infectious. As I mentioned, it could be plant toxins. There are many different plant toxins, usually weeds that are present in your pasture area that could be ingested by your animal resulting to abortion or poisoning. Next is dietary deficiencies or malnutrition. Usually it could be deficiencies with vitamins and minerals such as copper and selenium or magnesium. Also another non-infectious cause would be drugs. Hormones such as estrogen, GCC or glucocorticoids, phenothiazine, carbon tetrachloride, or levamisole. Levamisole is not a hormone. It is a dewormer. There are reports of late gestation abortion caused by levamisole. Next is fetal malformation. Anatomical abnormalities could also trigger abortion in goats. Why? The body of the doe tries to eliminate the foreign body in its system so that it could survive. And next is stress. High temperature or bullying. Physical stress, especially if there's bullying, definitely this would cause abortion. But for this topic, we will focus more on the infectious causes of abortion. As I've mentioned, it could be viral, bacterial, or protozoal. As for the virus, we will only discuss caprine herpes virus 1. For bacterial causes, it could be chlamydia, brucella, coxella, listeria, leptospira, or campylobacter. As for protozoa, it could be toxoplasma. So let's check each of these infectious agents. Virus. Caprine herpes virus 1, this is closely related to infectious bovine rhinotrochitis virus of cattle, which causes sporadic outbreaks of late-term abortions, often unassociated with other signs. The diagnosis is by submitting laboratory sample. Usually, you should submit multiple fetuses. Why? Because some of the fetuses may not have the virus. That's why they usually require multiple fetal samples for them to diagnose in the lab if the virus is present or not. So, presentive diagnosis would be through pathological examination and they will find necrosis and intracellular inclusion bodies in liver, lungs, and other organs. However, the definitive diagnosis would be 
viral isolation. That's why I said you should submit multiple fetuses. Also, by immunologic staining methods and PCR. How do we prevent the viral cause of abortion? Well, it is through biosecurity and unfortunately, there's no vaccine for this. Next, bacterial causes. There are many. <laughs> for this lesson, we will only discuss six bacteria and let's try to profile them. The clinical signs of these bacterial causes of abortion are almost similar, but we try to identify which bacteria cause the abortion by profiling the bacteria from our isolates. So, chlamydiosis. This is also called as enzootic abortion and it is caused by chlamydophila abortus. Brucellosis in goats. There are many species of brucella that could infect goats. However, the most commonly reported ones are brucella melitensis and brucella abortus. Coxulosis is caused by Coxella burnetti. Listeriosis is also called a circling disease because of the neurological form of this disease and it is caused usually by Listeria monocytogenes. For leptospirosis, there are many species of leptospira that were recorded or reported in goats which include interrogans, gripotyphosa, pomona, icterohemorrhagiae, and autumnalis. And last one is Campylobacteriosis. This is caused by Campylobacter fetus or jejuni. Previously, this was called Vibrio fetus intestinalis. You might find in other references why is Campylobacteriosis also being called as Vibrio fetus intestinalis. It's just the same. Most of this bacteria are actually zoonotic. So, which of this? Almost all, I think. You have brucellosis, leptospirosis, campylobacteriosis, coxulosis, which is called as Q fever in humans. Also, listeriosis is zoonotic, especially to immunocompromised patients. Here is a diagram showing how coxulosis infects humans. Coxella could be found in many different species, not just humans and goats, as you can see here. So they could include livestock and even pets and also wildlife and even insects. The transmission could be through ingestion, inhalation, or direct or indirect contact. Just the same with brucellosis. So, just a short break, folks. Did you learn something so far? If yes, please give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or suggestions or anything that you want to say about this lecture video, please comment below. And if you are enjoying this free lecture video, please consider subscribing in our YouTube channel and follow us on our Doc Athena Facebook page because there we could actually communicate better. You could send me a private message if you are shy to comment in this YouTube video. Also, if you think that this video is helpful to you and to others, please consider sharing this blessing as well to others. So that's our short break. Now let's go back to work. So we discussed the different bacterial causes of abortion. What are the clinical signs of these bacterial causes? As I have mentioned, they are almost the same. And the characteristic is, you might ask, what part of pregnancy do abortion occur for the bacterial causes of abortion? Usually, it's late term. Unfortunately, when we are already expecting the animal would go into labor anytime soon, something like that, then you will see abortion. It's very painful on our part as, of course, animal racers and as veterinarians. But it's good to know what are the clinical signs so that we could prevent it next time. So what are the clinical signs? 
you could see other reproductive signs such as reproductive failure in your herd. There's infertility, sterility, stillbirths, or if the kid survives, it could be a wicked and also diarrhea and vaginal discharge. There could be retained placenta, uterine infection, and testicular edema in males. Also, you will observe inflammation. So if you watched our lecture video in Pink Eye, I explained there in detail what are the five signs of inflammation, which are rubor, tumor, calor, and function lisa. The inflammation that we could observe also in cases of bacterial causes of abortion could be orchitis or if not orchitis, there could be swollen testicles, polyarthritis and or lameness, conjunctivitis, mastitis, and if there's mastitis, there could also be reduced milk yield. And also there are occasional concurrent respiratory disease. And of course, the most common sign that the animal is sick, depression. As for listeriosis, it also has an encephalitic form. And if the cause is listeriosis, we could also observe these other signs such as inappetence, which is a general sign of a sick animal. Also, in coordination. These are due to the neurological problems caused by listeriosis. If it has the encephalitic form, in coordination, facial paralysis, limp lips, or slack jaw. There could also be rigid neck, fever, salivation, circling, and drooping eyelid. So when there is excessive salivation or abnormal salivation in your animal, please consider listeriosis and use gloves when you're trying to inspect the oral cavity of your animal because as we have mentioned, listeriosis is also zoonotic, especially in immunocompromised patients. Okay, so what is special with leptospirosis? Leptospirosis could also cause abortion during leptospiremia, meaning the bacteria leptospira is already in the blood. Okay, there will also be anemia, icterus, and hemoglobinemia. This could be tested in the laboratory. However, for icterus, you could check the eyelid, the gums of the animal if there is icterus or jaundice. So, with leptospirosis, there could be fever or there could be a normal temperature. So, how do we diagnose? How do we know what bacteria actually caused the abortion? We have to submit samples to the laboratory. And usually, the samples are placenta. These are the most common. Placenta and other organs such as spleen, liver, and lungs. The experts in the lab or the pathologists would check the pathological lesions, both gross and microscopic examination. For gross, it is non-specific. Alright, there are non-specific lesions which could include fresh aborted fetus without gross pathology. So, it could appear normal. And there could be placentitis with reddish-brown or gray-brown exudate. And there could be thickened intercotyledonary areas, especially in coxulosis. Now, for microscopic examination, the placenta has necrotizing vasculitis and neutrophilic inflammation, distended chronic epithelial cells by small cocobacillary organisms. This is a picture taken from one of our references from Roast H.J. et al. So thank you to our reference for this visual presentation of gross pathology of Coxella burnetti infection. So as you can see, there is a thickened intercotyledonary areas for the positive sample. 
So, we already submitted samples to the lab. And what do they do there? They used a screening test first. And one of these would be the agglutination test. Agglutination test is usually used in cases of suspected cases of brucellosis. Also, they use fluorescent antibody or immunohistochemical staining or ELISA. These are just preliminary or screening tests. But for definitive diagnosis, they use bacterial isolation and identification and PCR. Is there a way to prevent this? Well, for some, there is a vaccine. Vaccination is one. However, you have to check in your country if there is a legally registered vaccine for a specific disease. However, for chlamydiosis, there is no vaccine for goats, but the vaccine for sheep is relatively effective. So technically, this would be off-label. So you have to consult a veterinarian. Other ways to prevent these bacterial causes of abortion in goats would be biosecurity, sanitation, and rodent control. As for control, all right, so we were not able to prevent it. The problem is already inside the farm. Is there a way to control it? Well, like any other disease, we would recommend isolation of infected animals during outbreak. That's why it is important that you have a hospital pen in your farm, especially if you are into commercial goat racing. Because you have to consider as well your investment with your animals. A small isolation room or hospital pen would do a lot in case of outbreaks. Also, of course, you have to consult your veterinarian for proper treatment because it depends on the regimen. Antibiotics could be used. However, combination of antibiotics are usually done for it to be uh, effective as a treatment regimen. Also, they use NSAIDs or steroids. It could be non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs or it could be steroids. Also, supportive therapy. It depends actually on the practice of your veterinarian. And it's very important that the animal is clinically checked or inspected for them to recommend proper treatment. And online consultation is difficult if the veterinarian does not do regular farm visit in your farm or if the veterinarian doesn't have a record of your animal's health. Now let's move to protozoa. We will only discuss one protozoal cause of abortion in this lecture and that is toxoplasmosis. This is caused by Toxoplasma gondii and cats are carriers. That's why it's very important we always emphasize the importance or the important role of cats in this problem which include toxoplasma and again this is zoonotic what are the clinical signs again late term abortion and there could also be mummified fetus stillbirths weak lumps or kids and up to 50 percent of the flock may be involved Again, I would like to reiterate the public health importance or concern of this disease. Pregnant women should not play with stray cats or try to avoid it because there is there are several reports of zoonotic transmission of toxoplasmosis in pregnant women. Well, maybe if your cats are in-house or indoor, if your cats are kept indoor, that could be safe. However, uh, still just to prevent it, try not to have um, close contact with any cats during your pregnancy period, just for prevention. So diagnosis of toxoplasmosis would include submission of laboratory samples as well with uh, placenta or fetal tissues or fluids. It could also be vaginal mucosa 
saliva, nasal secretion, urine, milk, lung, muscle, or mesenteric lymph node. And in the lab, they will do serology, which would include indirect hemagglutination, or indirect immunofluorescence, or IFAT, or ELISA. But of course, for definitive diagnosis, they will do bacterial isolation and identification, or PCR, okay? But for, ano, sorry, um, however, for, what do you call this? For definitive diagnosis, they would do PCR, okay? Still, that's the gold standard. And how do we prevent it? Well, vaccination and biosecurity, okay? Not just for animals, but also for uh, humans, for biosecurity or cleanliness or sanitation. And for treatment, okay, so there are actually based on a reference, there are contradictory reports. But um, I think I would stick with the latest one, which is from the USDA. According to them, there is no effective treatment recognized for toxoplasmosis at this time. However, in 2006, I just want to mention as well that according to Dr. Light Browning, they used the coccinate, monensin, and antibiotics to treat their case. And for, the, for their specific study, it was effective. All right. But then again, as for the latest report in, on, in 2019 from the USDA, there is no effective treatment recognized for toxoplasmosis at this time. That was 2019. I'm not sure for 2000. I'm not just sure this 2021, okay? So this is a photo of an aborted goat. So you see, um, this is from Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory. And thank you, KSVDL, for this photo. This shows approximately 12 week well-preserved fetus with no gross lesions presented at Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory by Dr. Sarah Schneider. So thank you, Dr. Schneider. As you can see, there is no gross lesions. All right. So that's all, folks. If you have any questions or if you want a copy of any of our references, you could send me a message in Doc Athena Facebook page and I could send you the links or if I have a PDF copy of these studies, then I could send it to you. All right. So just for summary, these are the infectious causes of abortion in goats. We have Caprine Herpes Virus 1, Chlamydiosis, Brucellosis, Coxialosis, Listeriosis, Leptospirosis, Campylobacteriosis, or Toxoplasmosis. And very important, most of this would cause late-term abortion and these cases are also zoonotic. Okay? So that's all, folks. I hope you learned something from this lecture. I hope to see you again soon. Please keep safe, everyone, and God bless us all. Bye! Thank you for being with us in this episode of Vet Talks with Doc Athena. For those who have not yet subscribed our YouTube channel, please do so. Did you learn something from this lecture? If yes, please hit the like button. If you want to be a part of our social media community and always updated of our new posts or to talk to me directly, you may do so by following our Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Again, thank you very much. Please keep safe, everyone. God bless us all, and I hope to see you again in our next lecture. This is Doc Athena, your country vet.